Well, hello everybody. Ron Legrand here and another issue of The Mentor Podcast. If you are not a member, go to thementorpodcast.com and sign up so you can get alerts. We do this every Wednesday and we, I'm interviewing some really, really great people. I have with me today, Brian and Lynette Wolf on a subject that I actually asked them to do for us um, because I get a lot of people uh, continually asking me, how do I find quality leads? Now, there's a big difference between leads and quality leads. Quality leads are more motivated, uh, easier to close, and need a lot less leads if you get to the good leads. Now, that seminar we're going to do at the end of the month, but a great part of that is how to do comps on a property. And if you can't do comps, it's not going to do you much good to find the leads because you have no idea what the house is worth. So the problem is that we used to use realestateabc.com and they have totally destroyed that site on us. So we have to find other sites to find uh, the comps. So that's what I've asked them to do today uh, is, is to uh, get, go over several sites that we can use to find the comps. And then at the end of August, on the 26th, 27th, they'll be back talking about how they find uh, ways that they find deals, along with a group of other professionals in the industry that use different things to find sellers. All right, so guys, how many sites do you have uh, we need to discuss today? We actually have five sites that we would like to discuss. All right. I'm yes. I'll turn it over to you and interrupt whenever I see the need. Of course. Uh, well, and, and as Ron said, guys, uh, if you're out there looking for properties to buy, there's a screening process. And a huge part of that screening process where you're going to figure out whether this is a good lead or not is the valuation. So the valuation is a huge component and you need to get accurate valuations. If you think a house is worth 250 and it's really worth 230 or 200, you're going to make bad decisions and you're going to get into properties that where you're not going to have a good outcome. So I, find you wanna... it, I find it works the opposite of that more than what you just said. Most people um, um, undervalue the property because they're using uh, like Zillow. Uh, Zillow is almost, uh, estimate is almost always below the market value of the property. Mm -hmm. Some people are using the tax assessment, which is totally irrelevant to the market value of the property. So you've got to be able to figure out what the real value is based on comps. So let's get going. That's on. exactly right. So guys, First the comps, and Ron's, Ron's correct. You can make a mistake either direction. You could make a mistake by being too conservative or mm -hmm. not conservative enough. But if you're too conservative, you're going to pass up on some great deals that are potentially out there for you. Now, that I used to correct. be... A, I used to be a manager of a mortgage office, guys, and I've read hundreds of appraisals and appraisers come up with their valuation by the comparison method. Now, there's three ways generally that appraisers can do appraisals. There's an income approach, a cost approach, and then this comparison approach. Now, with residential properties, like what we do, we always do the comparison approach. So if you read an appraisal from an actual appraiser, he's got three comps laid out there and he's got your subject property there and he's comparing them and saying that's why this is worth that and he's justifying it based on solds. So that's the biggest thing that will justify your value and establish your value is sold properties near you, not properties for sale. So if you say, oh, well that house down the, the road is asking 300, well, that doesn't, they could be wildly overpriced. A house is worth what a buyer will pay and you gotta see what buyers have been paying in your area. So the key is to find comps and find them in a user-friendly way. What we used to like about Real Estate ABC was that it had a really nice display of a chart where it was easy to compare the comps. And there was a field values you could click on so you could sort the comps easily. So we're gonna show you guys now, Dreams has a really good way of sorting. A lot of you guys already maybe have the Dream system and the Dream system has a way to run comps. There's a tab called comps right in the Dream system. Uh, and we're gonna get into that. Um, we want you, now there's, when I mention these three ways, you might go on Zillow and Zillow will mention 
There is actually three ways that Zillow estimates value on, Z on their Zillow. They have a tax model and an off-market off model in addition to this estimate. Now, what we're gonna talk about here, guys, and you're gonna run into these anytime you're on the internet, is what we call AVMs. That's so, right. It's yeah. automated valuation models, if you wanna write that down. Yes. ABM. So what is estimate? It's the most popular automation, uh, value, automated valuation model out there. Everybody kind of knows about this estimate and it can be off and it can be accurate and it can be too low or too high. And like Ron said, Zillow tends to be low, which is good for us when we talk to the seller. The key with uh, Zillow and all these automated valuation models is they're taking all the houses in a certain area that have sold within a certain time span and they're working a proprietary algorithm to figure out how much they think one individual house is worth. The problem is they're pulling in houses that may not really be accurate comps. So what mm -hmm. you need to do is be able to look at actual comps. So I want you to not just go by these automated valuation models, AVMs I'm gonna call them, it's a mouthful. So <laughs> don't go by the AVMs only. I want you to specifically look up comps and we're gonna show you how to do that in an easy way. Now I'll tell you, how did we used to look up comps in the olden days? MLS, Multiple Listing Service. Yeah, and you know what? You didn't have access to the MLS. You had to go through an agent. So most people, when it came time to price a house or to figure out how much a house was worth, they would go around asking maybe in the neighborhood, well, what are you listing your house for? Well, did you hear about anybody who sold a house around here? And now with the internet, and Zillow is a great site for this, and all these sites that we're gonna talk about, display these comps and they not only display the comps they show you where it was what it sold for how much it sold for and you can look at a bunch of pictures now the pictures may or may not be entirely accurate but there's pictures there so you can sometimes get a good indication and so i want you to also rely on pictures when you're doing these comps because sometimes you can get an incorrect impression and especially i'll tell you sometimes you're kind of hanging your hat on one comp and because there's just not a lot of comps in the area. So you see, okay, well, I'm asking 300. There's one comp that justifies it that sold for a 310 that's not even as nice as mine. Or is it way nicer than yours? And that's where you got to look at it. And so that's where I want you to look at pictures. Because you might look at that comp for 310 and go, wait a minute, that was in perfect condition. And that they just finished renovating it. And they added a pool and this and that. And mine doesn't have a pool. And mine isn't that nice. And so wait, I was saying 300. Maybe it's not 300. So that's what, the value of being able to look at pictures of actual sold property comps. Okay, so let's get into if we're... You know, Can start I go off. through a couple quick steps on dreams? Because that obviously a lot of you guys have dreams. Yes. We don't have well, time to uh, yeah, Better explain what dreams is. And it's actually just our second level of our gold club. At two ninety seven a month, you get the, the uh, CRM. And dreams is part of that. That's a, um, that's, it runs your whole business. Frankly, it replaces an employee. And there's, I uh, get a website and a bunch of other things in that, but it's two ninety seven a month and uh, you already got your comps right at your fingertips. For those of you who are not in that, then we got some other sites for you. For those of you who are in it, you probably will not be able or need to go beyond dreams um, uh, because comps are comps. And I will tell you though, Ron, I will tell you that uh, there are some really nice features on some of these other sites. Yeah. And we're going to okay. tell you are this new favorite site and Trulia, for instance, has some things you just won't find on dreams. And so right. it's worth it when you're investigating and doing your research on a property, guys, especially if you like, if you're a thinker mm -hmm. brain, you like to do this kind of stuff anyway, don't waste a bunch of time doing this. But we're going to show you if you pop over on like two or three sites real quickly, you can get a really good idea of the value. All right. Well, let's get to them because we're running. Okay, so dreams <laughs> well so uh, let's go into dreams first guys so yeah. first thing you do is you go to your dashboard and this is and we're going to go quickly because some of you guys don't even have dreams so go to your dashboard click deals and then select your property pipeline okay select the property you want to find comps for and uh then select the comps tab it's up there in all caps comps a map will pop up your subject property is marked by a red pin all the comps have little green pins. Now, right below that, there's a list. And I'm telling you, there, there's my favorite three sites are just like, they're all the same. They all have the map there with the pins on it. They're different colors, but they all got the pins. And then they all got the list right underneath there. 
So whereas we used to go to real estate ABC to see that nice kind of list, it's, they pretty much have a list right there. It's not, is, it's not on a grid where it's like one line per, but they're pretty much all listed out where you can get them all on one computer screen. So you can see. Right. Let me interrupt yeah. um, how important that map is. Mm -hmm. Because when you're looking at that map, folks, first of all, you can see that your comps are close by. That's one of the three things you need to make it a real comp. Secondly, you can see if there's any dividers between your subject and your comp, like major highways or interstates or waterways and so forth. And if there are, you better do more homework on what's the other side of that, because those houses could be worth twice as much or half as much on the other side of a major divider. And on many of these websites, they have the value of the house that's sold right there on that screen. So you can I love that. see the values of other houses before you go any further. So uh, that map's a pretty important part of this uh, screening process. Right, and guys, so when you're looking at the map, you can see the distance from each house. In the DREAMS program, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you that all of them have a similar situation layout, but I really like the DREAMS here because across the top, they have that, uh, you know, a grid, and then across the top, you can sort the properties by different values. Proximity, which is how far sales price, beds and baths, square footage, price per square footage, and then there's even a link. And then you, what I like about the dreams is you can click on the ones you want to use. So there's a box at the end that says use. And then if you click on it, then you're using that as one of your comps to tabulate your estimate. So unlike the Zest Zillow, which pulls the comps they want to tabulate your value, right. you can actually pick the comps you want. So you can pick the comps that are more accurate to you. You can actually refine your search on dreams in a way that none of these other ones offer. So that's kind of, that's pretty cool. One last thing I want to say that I love about dreams is you get the rent comps too. Yes, you can check uh, those two tabs, rent comps or sold comps. Now remember all these properties we're talking about that come out on a grid pattern and that have the little pins in them, they're all solds. They all sold for you know, a blank, they, you know how much they sold for and when they sold and you can look it all up. And all right. square footage. Yes, yeah, square, and footage. square footage. Square yep, footage. Square footage is one of the things you wanna be very careful because you can't compare a 1,000 square foot house to a 2,000 square foot. Uh, yes. So make sure that your square footage on your comps is within 20% oh, either way of your subject or you're mm -hmm. probably using a, um, an invalid comp. Well, we always, the sort of the rules of thumb in the biz, guys, is the comp should be sold within a year. Six months is even better. Uh, it should be within a mile and with no major divider, uh, you know, landscaping in between. And it should hopefully be within about 300 square feet of your subject, depending on the overall size. If you're looking at a 2,000 square foot house, you'd like it to be between 1,800 and 2,200, ideally. But you know, you, you take what you can get and that's why sometimes there's less or more comps. Now we're gonna talk about another site that well, we really, minute. okay. Before we go any further, I am shocked that I'm saying this, but I agree with everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know. Well, validate. I don't say that, don't say that all that often, right? <laughs> no. That is true. That's fine. Well, we've both been around a long while, guys, and we both understand this world of comps. And it's really important to get this, or you, like we said earlier, you can slip up. So yeah. now, uh, okay, anything going... else on Dreams? I think Dreams is no, great, think... guys. So remember, it's two ninety seven. If you have that, it's free to you, and you can use this to easily go yeah. and check comps. And that okay. includes the Gold Club, by the way. It's not fifty nine plus two ninety seven. Two ninety seven includes the fifty nine. Oh, yes. that's a good point. Yes. So if that's a good deal. If you're going to be in this business, you need, you need this very inexpensive tool. By the way, how do we get to it? Um, ronsgoldclub.com. Yes. Or you can go on ronlegrand.com and you'll find a place to get to it there as well. I'll give you all the information if you're not already in it. <laughs> yes. That's so valuable to you guys. And you even get a website. You know, I mean, as part of the CRM, Ron, you didn't even mention yeah. that. They actually get a website. So yeah, that's, that's part of the 297, yeah. all yeah. already template created. So now here's our, here's our new one, Ron, and I'm gonna ask you, I, I'm gonna wonder if you heard of this or not. Have you heard of Ownerly? Ownerly. Ownerly? 
Owner Lee. Owner I I saw it advertised on TV. I have yes. not. Oh, you got to write yes. this down, Ron. This is amazing. Owner, Owner Lee. Yes, it's it's actually O W N like own E R L Y. So O W N E R L Y dot com. Okay. Dot com. Good. All right. Now here's how you got to do this. Now this is the the only thing that might throw you initially. Let me tell them. This is why I initially saw uh, the commercial like you're talking about on TV, and yeah. I went on the site and it made me sign up. Sign up, put your password. I'm like, oh, this is another continuity where I got to put in my charge card. No, it's free. Keep going. Keep yes. going. It is the best site ever. Yeah, you do have to create an account, which means you enter your email and a eight, uh, eight, and a digit, password. eight digit password. But that's okay. So that's pretty simple. And within a second, you've got an account. And actually, that tracks you so that every time you go in there, every property you've ever searched comes up in your list which is nice because it's not like Zillow where you have to, you know, or if you don't have an account, you know, so every time you do a search on a property, it saves them all. So that's so nice. How does that search compare to the dream search? Well, here's what you do. You click on search a new address and you put the new address in there and you click on the property. It's going to show a map. And now here's some of the different features that ownerly has, but guys, many of these are very similar. Uh, because you know, there's only so much data and most of it is in the display and how user friendly it is. And so it'll pop up right away and it's a nice display in the front. It'll say estimate value by ownerly. So they'll put a price on it. Now what's really nice is they also have another little uh, thing called collateral analytics right next to it. So there's two prices on the front page, the price that ownerly thinks it is and their confidence score. So it'll say 91 out of 100. I looked up one of our houses and uh, the ownerly score, they had 91 out of 100 confidence score and they said the property was 601,000. And then this, and then they had collateral analytics and they put that, the va they put the value at 593, which is pretty 596. close. 596. Oh, 596. Yeah. Yes, and they their confidence was 85 out of 100. Now what they're doing is they're self-reporting these collateral analytics which I think is basically Zillow. Now here's the other thing guys, is that other sources like Trulia uses the Zestimate. So if you think Trulia is going out and creating their own AVM, they're not. Okay, they're using the Zestimate. So all the values you see on Trulia are the Zestimates because those companies are the same. Zestimate bought Trulia in 2015 for $3.5 billion. So they basically give the same information. So you'd think, why would they have two things? But they're the number one and two visited websites, you know, of, of, in real estate. And they own Zillow. Zillow. Yeah, Zillow. Zillow. Not, Zillow's not number one. Yeah, <laughs> Zillow. That's oh, right. right, right. Yeah, so Zillow bought them. And so Zillow's number one. They uh, uh, get you know, a ridiculous amount of hits per month. And so it is, but uh, Trulia. Trulia does as well. Uh, so right, now uh, let's go back to ownerly. You didn't finish. The, right. Does, yeah. Does, so does it do anything that dreams doesn't? Uh, it well, the, some of the things I like it about it is um, it just displays the pro the information in a really good way. It has those same property details all laid out. It has a chart, you know, where they have all the values across the top. So it's very similar. It has a map with the with the uh, uh, with all the pins on it. Um, there is a couple of useful views, like on all the on the grid pattern of all the comps. There is another view choice where you get a little bit more information. So one lists them out, and one has sort of like boxes. So it, it it's kind of good. Brian, does it have yeah. the sale dates and the square footage? Yes. 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 It has exact, it has all the information you want, guys. It's got everything okay. that is, you know. Uh, does does it have photos? It does not have photos. No. And that, that's a good point, Ron. It does not have photos. So that's where we got to go back to the old granddaddy Zillow to get mm -hmm. the photos. Okay, does so, it, but, but again. Does it, have a, does it have a link to Zillow? Uh, it doesn't have a link to Zillow either. Not yet, no. but I'll tell you, it wouldn't surprise me if it does pretty soon, Ron. This is brand <laughs> new, and they're always adding stuff to it. Yes. And yes. Um, what I like best about Ownerly, I would say it's just so brain dead simple. I yeah. mean, you click okay. this and this. All right. Now, I like the confidence scores, and I like they have this chart that shows if they have a low confidence score, 
the bar is kind of wider. And then if they have a high confidence score, the bar is narrower and it has the prices along the top. So okay. it displays it and mm -hmm. I, you get a real good sense. And the fact that they compare what they think it's worth, owner lease AVM is comparing to this collateral analytics, which I like as well. So you can right. kind of, you know, balance them out. And it's free. Yes, and it's okay. free. And have an account. And gosh, Ron, I just like the way it's laid out. It's real pretty and it's easy to follow and it's big letters. And I mean, it's just we got, fun it, to we got it. We got it. We got it. Okay, let's go. To the next. Okay, that's ownerly. All right, All right. Now, the next after that one, guys, I'm going to talk about Zillow for a minute because Zillow has something that nobody else has. And we've got to talk about this. And it's called the Lot Lines View. And this is the oh, one yeah. thing that I love the most about Zillow. And this is a way, if you had 10 seconds and you were on the phone with the seller and you had 10 seconds to look up a comp of how much you think that house is worth, you could do it this, and this is how I would do it. And what you do is you click on Zillow and go on Zillow.com, enter the address. Right when the display comes up, the map pops up there. It's sort of a little abbreviated version. You click on that and it enlarges full screen and then there's three little boxes over on the left top that say which different views there are. Map view, which is just like the streets, you know, like a map, then satellite, and then lot lines. Click on that lot lines view, and instantly the thing looks like a satellite view. It's got all the, you know, it's a real picture from the satellite, but all of a sudden there's a whole grid pattern drawn over the entire world of every lot. And somehow they went into the county recorder or whatever and got every lot. And on top of every lot is the Zestimate for that house. Now, whether or not you think the Zestimates are accurate, you don't have to go by those because guess what? They have yellow dots. What are all the little yellow dots that you see clustered around your house? Those are recent solds. And they say exactly what they sold for. So there's no Zestimating. It says what the thing sold for. What do we base our comps on? Recent solds, that's what we're looking for is recent solds and what they sold for. So if you go to the Zillow lot line view and just look for the yellow dots, and it's telling you all, every single comp what it sold for. Now, the thing about, that I will warn you a little bit, Zillow goes kind of, they're pretty liberal on that yellow dot for recent sales. I've seen those things like two and three years old. So that's kind of not like what your real appraisal amount is. So they might be a little skewed. Uh -huh. Yeah, so let, so let me make a point. Yes. You can't, first of all, what I do, I've got my subject here. All right, I want to look for the highest sales close by on them yellow dots. Yes. A punch on the yellow dot to bring up the information to see if it is a recent sale and as compare it to square footage on your property. Okay? Right. And so it may not even be a comp. So you're looking for the highest sales near your property that sold recently that are closest in the square footage. And you can do that all right there on that map. That's right. And all, how long does it take to click on about 10 yellow dots? And so basically you just click on every yellow dot. And like Ron said, when did this thing sold? You already know how much it sold for because the number's right on there. But how, is it the right square footage or is it 600 square feet more than mine? No, that doesn't work. If, it, if the square footage is right and it was within the last year, you probably got a really, really good comp there, especially because it's right down the street. Yeah. You can see exactly how far it was away. So this and, is my, this is my magical on, sauce. And on Zillow, you want to, you can pull up a picture of your comp. Yes. Pictures, yes. that's okay. what I say. See how that compares. That's and so right. when you hit that yellow dot, guys, the whole Zillow listing, the old Zillow listing pops up. And a lot of times you can see the pictures and everything right there. If the pictures are still up there, which a lot of times they are. So that's beautiful because you can read everything about that house and know, wow, that's very different or that's exactly like my house. Sometimes they're the same square footage. You know, that's the same model as yours. So okay. that's, yeah. The so downside, we love the, downside yeah. of Zillow is the map is great. But boy, the way they list comps sucks in my opinion. So it, it's not so user friendly. Right. If you go yeah. under, the, yes. Yeah. It, when you go over on the right side under home values, they do have some comps displayed there. Sometimes it doesn't come up on the first time. So you have to click a tab and open up home value yeah. tab. And then sometimes you even have to click see more. So it is, it's yeah. more clicking to get to, and then they'll yeah. have some houses pop but up. But they don't have that nice map like like uh, all the ones we've been talking about, where you can find them easier on the map like that. So, like I mean, yeah, 
Um, well, but one thing I like is that you can click on the county, it has a link right to the county website so you can see who's on title. So when you're yes. filling out your contracts to go see the What does? Just Zillow? take a little note, Zillow. yes. Take a little note, guys. Go under price slash tax history, which is a valuable thing to know anyway. It's on the right side, it's under a tab on Zillow. And it will usually have a link that'll say county website. Yep. Or, and you, if you click on that, it'll go right to the parcel that your, your house parcel and it'll give you the owner of record. So when you write the agreement, you can write in exactly who owns this. Sometimes it's an LLC or a trust or something you didn't even know. And also it gives you all the legal description and all that. I love so that that's, part of that's Zillow. a nice feature on Zillow. Yeah. So Zillow, obviously, yeah, they guys, you, everybody should be going on Zillow pretty much every day. It's the best research. It's an awesome research site. And uh, I just love that lot line view. So if you didn't write down lot line view, it's my yes. favorite thing. Oh, there's red, yes. just one more thing to run. There's red dots on there. Don't go by the red dots. The red dots are houses for sale, but it's good to notice if there's a whole bunch of red dots all around your house, yikes, maybe there's something in that neighborhood where it's not looking good. So yeah. it, you want to see maybe a couple of red dots, like pretty good prices, and mainly just go by those yellow dots. And then Zillow also has a estimate for the rent. Um, it'll show what rents are going for, but it's kind of hard to find. Like you yeah. said, that's the one thing about Zillow. You have to sometimes have to click a couple times, but you can see the rent comps on Zillow as well. Yes. Yeah. I'll tell you, on our commercial deals that my students are sending me, I insist on that map with that lot line on it so I can see yeah. lying around the lot and I can check the road frontage right then and there and I can spot it on the map, know exactly where it's at. That's a very important part um, that I, I don't know, maybe another one has it, but Zillow is the only one that I know of. Yes, and guys, I have not found that anywhere but Zillow and it's incredibly valuable for commercial because yeah. Ron and us have done some commercial stuff. And when I was looking at commercial stuff, when we went to his commercial boot camp, and students would come out, where is this? First thing I do is go on that Zillow lot line view and see exactly everything around it. And it's really yeah. valuable. All right, All right let's now, get to number four. Okay, so let's talk about Trulia. Trulia, Trulia is number four. Yes, and guys, we like Trulia a lot. Now it looks like Zillow. It work, obviously it looks and works kind of like Zillow because they own they're owned by them. Uh, there is some differences and there are some really pretty cool differences. They really focus more on like the livability stuff. They have stuff like uh, school rankings, very detailed. They have this neighborhood overview. They even have these little boxes, what the locals are saying. This is really kind of cool, Ron. Oh, yeah. It says what locals say about it's dog friendly and they rank all these things. So dog friendly, there's holiday spirit, car is needed, people would walk alone at night, parking is easy, there's wildlife. And so all of those things are ranked and that those things mean a lot. So it's livability. You kind of look at Trulio, none, none of the other sites have that. And they have these little boxes of where they got testimonials. I don't know how they got them or if they called people or what, but there's little boxes with people who live in the area saying, talking about the neighborhood. So I've never seen that any other site. You know, you know what I'm have, thinking? I'm What's thinking that? that might be a good thing to put on your flyer when you're selling the house. <clears throat> That's yes. a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Your flyer. yeah. I like that That's idea. That's brilliant. I like that idea. That Guys, is brilliant. Yeah, and because there's some really good marketing stuff on truly a four-year house about that neighborhood for sure. It has it photos. Like, uh, it does have photos, yes. Yes. It has photos. It also, uh, Trillia gives you a visual breakdown of the monthly cost for a property. So some people find that friendly. Um, yeah. Some of the things that come up right when you come onto the front page, which don't aren't seen in other places, is the schools have a button. There's a button for crime and there's a button for commute. So right on the front page, right where you pop up, you can click on those things if you're concerned about those things. Does so, it have square footage, date of sale? Yes. Bill. It, it displays it does, everything, it displays you know, everything. it displays everything on that same kind of grid pattern with the map. So it's, okay. you know, kind of like all the other ones in the, in terms of that. Uh, and it also has some nice price trends. They, uh, and then they also have homes for rent in area. And uh, so that's a different little feature. They have they homes have, for they rent. They have nice photos too. I was on now, that your day. Yes, and here's what I like about that. People, you don't think about this, but homes for rent in the area. 
That is really valuable and I've only seen that on Trulia. Why is that valuable? Because you're buying this house and in two weeks, your house is gonna be right next to those houses. And so you can see what houses are renting for right in that little area and how much they're renting for right now. So that's really a valuable one. In fact, I usually have to look that up. If, I, if I'm not here, I'd have to look it up somewhere else, go on Craigslist and try to look yeah. up how much your house is renting for in that area. So this is very valuable to have, guys. So I like, there's a ton of things to like about Trulia. That's also on Zillow, hmm. rent comps. But I want you all to take that with a grain of salt now. Because if we're putting a lease option tenant buyer in the house, we're always going to get more than what that thing says. Yes. Don't forget, that's the average rent. That's not the top rent in the neighborhood. So take all this stuff with a grain of salt and use your common sense. Remember, we right. let tenant buyers tell us what they'll pay for rent. But it does give you a guideline, but you know you should be thinking above that, not below that. Also, I almost forgot to say this, guys. When you're on your lot line view with Zillow, uh, look for the purple dots. What's a purple dot? Purple dot is a rental. It'll usually say Careful. like 1.4k. And most people, the first time they see it, say, "What? That house is selling for one thousand four hundred dollars?" No, it's a rental. It's purple. And so you can see all the properties for rent around your property. That's another easy way with that overhead view, that lot line view to see that. And Ron, I know you mentioned this and this doesn't do with comps, but when we say to the lease purchase buyer, what's the most you can pay per month? Uh, when that buyer says, I don't know, what are you asking? This is great. Write this down if you guys are taking notes, because that's when I always say, well, how much are you paying per month right now? Because that's going to screen them in or out right Good. there. Yes, that's, that's good. a good, very good pre-screening line. Yeah, without making them commit into anything. Now, the last site, Ron, that we wanted to squeeze in. Uh, hey, was hey, e I yeah. have to answer that. Okay. <laughs> yes. You can also say, well, you have to tell me the most you can pay, because the more you can pay, the closer to the top of the list you get. <laughs> yes, I, I that's like right. that. I that's guess, a good one, guys. I thought that was yeah. my idea. I think I got it from him. Yeah. <laughs> Who can even remember where most of these lines come from? All right. You're so brilliant, Ron. Yes. We're not worthy. Yeah, we love working with Ron. Ron's always yeah. a smart guy. And guys, this is the smartest stuff. These, this is the way that you can determine so much about a property. The researchability of properties is just amazing. When we all started, Ron and us, their internet didn't even really exist. You couldn't look up anything. Zillow didn't exist. And now at the touch of a button, right at your fingertips, uh, there's such a wealth of information. No, you had instead of Elmo, Ron, you had one of those projectors. An yeah. overhead projector. An overhead projector. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> we met, Ron. Yeah. Okay, that, get, the, get the last one, guys, because you're, you're about out of time. Oh, um, okay, last the one. The last number five is e-appraisal. E, yes. E-appraisal. With no so, E-P-P. -P. Yeah. Correct. It's spelled just Sorry. like... Spelled just like appraisal except with an E. And guys, this uses the Zestimate as well. So th this is also tied into there. So they don't even have their own AVM. Remember the automated valuation model. So they do have some good, what I like, Ron, I don't even wanna go into this very much because it's a good site if you wanna do just a little extra research and they have some nice frequently asked questions. If you wanna do some research about the area uh, or you know, there's some, training on there that's kind of good local stuff and so i i'd check it out but uh honestly we've given you guys way too much already if you just go on uh if you check it out on the zillow lot line view if you go on your dreams of course and uh if you go on ownerly if you don't have dreams or one of these other ones uh very high quality information presented in a very user-friendly way. But now. the main thing I like about mm -hmm. ePraisal Run is that it's actually got um, good train. It has some really cool training, mm -hmm. some good training, and you can take some of the reports. It'll say how to sell your house quickly. You can borrow some of the reports on there, and it has a really good frequently asked questions section. So it's kind of informational. Yes. Right. Yeah, well, there's reports. Yeah. To reiterate on your point, Brian, you only need one of these sites. Okay. You yeah. Yes. And you know, you don't go to five sites to figure out what the comps are. Because look, right. a sale is a sale is a sale. Okay. That's right. No matter what website it's on. So if you find two sales that are close in square footage, close in proximity, and sold recently, the highest 
two sales you find are your comps, not yes. the lowest, not conservative, knocking them down, the highest two, as long as they meet those other three criteria, you just throw out the rest. And I know that's gonna to be tough for you thinker brains to do. <laughs> if you don't, you're gonna undervalue it and it may kill your whole offer. And, and uh, I, I'm telling you right now, more people lose properties because they undervalue them than, than overvalue them. And don't forget, if you think you are overvalued, you, you can always get it appraised before you close, you know? You're not taking any risk by getting something under contract. But um, undervalue means that you probably will make an offer that won't get accepted in the first place. So you've got to get good at comps. You've got to learn to read them. Do not use the Zestimate. It will trick you. The Zestimate, guys, on my home is approximately half its last appraisal. Now, okay, I'm on 10 acres and I got a complicated property, but just the same, that just shows you how you better not be using the Zestimate. All right. Uh, and I, I want to say one quick thing. Um, when we're doing the mentoring program for you, I can't tell you, tell you how many times students will send in their uh, lead sheets and they'll put a suspect. And then I look at the comps and they were so conservative. Yeah, they yeah, killed they the them. deal because of the comps. So as yeah. a mentor, me and Brian will go do those comps for them. And we actually, that one deal we talked about yesterday, it, the acquisitionist Barbara, she went on and did comps and came in way too low. We never would have went out and got that contract for 470 because her comps came in less than 400. And it turned out that that house was worth 525 and we I, got it for 460. Quite, quite frequently. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't do it yesterday, Lynette. This oh. podcast that airs way out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, guys, you're going to be part of my finding the sellers thing at the end of August. Yes. What's your plan there? Because you're going to be talking about social media. Uh, well, you're going to have one session on uh, what we just covered and what else would you add, but you're actually going on the sites, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. We're going to walk you through the sites. And then you're going to add another session about uh, finding sellers and buyers on social media and what sites to use because there's a bunch of killer sites that are free that you use and we need everybody else to know about it. So uh, guys, get registered for that. The link is right here. It's free, and it's uh, uh, three days of nothing but finding sellers, for crying out loud. And they're not all talking about the same thing. So by the time you get through with that, you're going to have way more to do than you can do. Um, and again, it's about finding quality leads. Quality leads means they're calling you. And uh, we're going to cover a big gauntlet of things that really work and that are free or inexpensive. All right, guys, um, man, that was an incredible presentation you just did. Thank you. That was, it was, that was a very valuable content right there. And I know everybody watching uh, learned something from it because we need to get new uh, sites and since real, I don't know what real estate ABC did, but boy, they sure destroyed that site. And we, you know, been using that for years and I've been preaching it. Now I gotta get the word out, can't use it anymore because it, there's nothing on there of value right now that I you even had it on some of your forms. You got to take it off. The property information. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I yep. do. All right. Well, but thanks. these are fantastic alternatives, guys. These are all high quality. And if you want to bounce around and check out a house on a couple of different things, there's some different features that you'll really like. But like Ron said, what you're really looking for, two recent solds that are true comps, the highest values that you can find. Okay. Well, thank you all. Always a pleasure. Thank Ryan, you, Ryan. We owe you everything. Thank you again for our life. Yes, well, thank you send, so much. Send, send money. <laughs> <laughs> we do. No. All right. okay. Love you, Ron. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye.